Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh yes, I am two thumbs up. St I am still above the grass, still vertical. Everything is great. And today, we are going to go back to the North American continent at the invitation of Alec Berry. Now, Alec wrote me a few weeks ago and he said, could you do Houston, K-I-A-H, to Dallas, Fort Worth, K-D-F-W, please? Of course we can. So that's what we'll do today. Now, because we're going to go back into the Lone Star State of Texas, I have to put on proper headgear. <laughs> what do you think? Looks good? Yeah. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy, partner. I think that's how they say it. Anyway, we'll try this out and see how well it does. Do you think I'll pass for a Texan? Not awfully sure, but anyway, we'll see. <laughs> now, I did check to see what the flight plans would look like, and apparently there are a lot of flights between those two points. Believe it or not, it's only 240 miles between Houston and Dallas-Fort Worth to the north. That's, what, uh, 360 kilometers. Not that far. It makes you wonder why someone would probably go driving to an airport, go through all of the hours of security checks and everything else, all of the intrusions and the baggage and whatnot, get to the gate, get on the airplane, and then it's about an hour and five minutes flight and then you've got to go through all of the baggage and all of the other stuff, getting a taxi to get into the center of town. Surely you could drive at least the same time or even better between the two points. But a lot of people take that flight. It's very popular and there are lots and lots of flights to choose from. United Airlines does it, and American Airlines does it. And I checked up on one of those flights that we're going to follow is American Airlines Flight 2420. 2420. If you want to look that up on FlightAware, just put AA2420, and that will come up with the information and all of the historical flights. We'll be departing from one of the Charlie stands and arriving at one of the Alpha stands when we get to Dallas-Fort Worth. I've got some lovely airport sceneries. Both of them are made by FS Dream Team and they really are detailed and really good. So I've got the Dallas-Fort Worth one and I've got the Houston one, both by FS Dream Team. Right. Well, we are about ready then. What do you think, Alec? Shall we go on into pre-flights and check out the weather and make ourselves a flight plan? Is that a good idea? Okay. See you in pre-flight. Well, here we are in flight aware and we're looking at American Airlines flight 240 here 
Here's the designator underneath here. You can see there you are, AA2420. This one is expected to depart in 56 minutes. It says it's going to depart from gate C11. And when it arrives in Houston, it's scheduled to dock at gate A27. And it's reporting that it's on time. Taxi time is around about 10 minutes, it says, and the taxi time at destination is about 12 minutes. Now, here's the proposed route that they're showing here. Going here from Houston down here, it's a departure, and then it's a zigzag, and then it goes all the way up to Dallas-Fort Worth. This particular one is an Airbus A320, but they also use uh, Boeing 737s on this route as well. Altitude that's been filed is 27,000 feet, and here is the route that they have published, and whether or not we actually get the same one is another matter. Here's windy.com for... Houston, Texas. Here you can see the downtown is right here. And here, this is where the airport is located, just to the north of the city. Wind is 240 degrees at 5 knots. Visibility 10 statute miles. No clouds under 12,000 feet. Temperature is 11 degrees Celsius. Still a little cool. Altimeter is 29998, almost uh, standard. 29992 is the standard uh, altimeter setting. And it's also reporting a history of VFR. Now, if the wind is coming in from 240, then let's see here. The Charlie stand is on this abutment that sticks out right here, this part here, I believe. And if we're going to be departing, then likely this might be the one that uh, we could leave from. And this is the 26 left. The 26 left is long enough. It's 9,402 feet. So we could get that. We don't know. We'll have to wait until we find out what's being assigned. Destination. Here is Fort Worth right here. And Dallas on this side, Fort Worth on that side. And the airport is pretty much in the middle. It's reporting wind at 300 degrees. Visibility 10 statute miles. Few clouds at 10,000 feet. Temperature is cooler there, 4 degrees. Altimeter is 3001. A little higher pressure there. But the wind is coming from the northwest, sweeping down. As to which runway? Well, it looks like it'll be either this one or that one. If the wind is going to be holding straight. So we'll just have to see what they assign us. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair, we are 186, and we are departing from KIAH, and we're going to go to KDFW. Oh, and the alternate, should things go pear-shaped, is to return to Houston. <laughs> Well, it is a short flight after all. We are Ryanair, and there's our airframe. This is our registration. There's the cruise profile right there. Schedule flight time is 1 hour 15 minutes. Departure is on 27. Arrival runway at 31 right is what it's got here. We are going to be full with passengers because we have, of course, a ton of 
complimentary champagne and caviar. All those oil men down there, they need all of that stuff, don't they? Mm. And here is the route that they've come up with. And looking at all of these routes, these are all the routes that have uh, been used just recently. Route distance 204 nautical miles. And there it is. There's the, the route going up and then coming back down. I would have thought that there would have been somewhere a little bit closer than that, perhaps even Austin, Texas. Austin is the state capital, by the way. But I don't know. All right, well, we'll accept that. We'll, we'll take that. Let's go up to the top then and save the flight. And let's generate the flight plan and see what altitude we've been given. Ah, we're going to be flying at flight level 300. Okay, 30,000 feet. Airtime is 44 minutes. There's the block fuel. And there's our routing. If we do this exact route, of course, I'm going to put it into the description box below so you can follow it at your own leisure. Going down, we are Ryanair 186. There's the cruise flight level. And there is the route. The Beltway 7 is the departure SID. And the Creed is the main route going north. And then the Whiny 4 is the arrival star at Dallas-Fort Worth. We need to know that we're cost index 6. There's our average wind that we're going to need to put in. There's our block fuel that we need to make sure is loaded. We have reserves of 3,085 and the trip and taxi is 2,290. No tankering recommended, but we are tankering. If we're going there and coming back, should there be a problem? Well, that is tankering. And there is the route. And as I say, if we follow this and there are no deviations, I'll post this down below. We're also going to need to know the descent at 20,000 feet. Then we need to know the flight direction and speed. We also need to know it at 15,000 feet and at 10,000 feet. Right, going all the way down now to have a quick look at the weather. Well, there is some weather coming in off the Gulf, and then there is also something here that's sweeping in from the west, but at flight level 370, well below us. And here's the winds aloft for our cruising altitude. And oh my goodness me, well, We've got some crosswinds to begin with, and then we've got headwinds going into Dallas-Fort Worth. Oh, well. And here is the vertical profile. So we start out here at Houston, climb up. We have a short length of time at our cruising altitude before we descend into Dallas-Fort Worth. Here is the tropopause. So we will be higher than the tropopause. So we should have some fairly stable weather conditions up there so we can afford to bring out all the posh crystal goblets for the champagne. Ha! How about that? 
Right, let's go into Navigraph charts. All right, we click on flights, new flight from Simbrief, and we bring this one in that we've just made. Click on this and open the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport information, so we'll put that at the bottom. Parking gates and parking gate um, coordinates right there. We're also going to look at the Beltway 7 departure. And this is the one it's suggesting right here. So that would be our departure. And I'm going to pin that one as well. Over here at our destination, I'm going to open this. We'll need the airport information and the parking gates. I'll put those in as well. We're coming in on 31 right, according to this. So there's 31 right, and that would be this one. So let me bring this one up. So that's the one that it's proposed for us to come in on. Okay. Well, we can handle that. And then we're going to be using the the whiny for arrival. So I'm going to pin that one also. All right, going back to the arrival on here, I'm going to make the approach, let's see. If we're going to be coming in on that runway, there's Van de Gaucho Tuloy. Okay, let's see what it, we bring up to. So this is on 3-1 right. ILS, 3-1 right. And we'll be coming in and intercepting the Tuloy, which is right there. So we go from here, intercept Tuloy, and then straight down on the final. So technically, we are making a little base leg there, or we may just go from here straight up to there. We'll have to see. All right, we have all of our charts. And now we are set and ready to go. Hello there, Alec. Come on in and take your seat. I have my proper Texas hat on. I'm not sure, oh dear. The rubber band has just come off that was holding it in shape. Oh well, there you go. Actually, this isn't so much a Texas hat as it's my gardening hat. Oh well. Well, I've got the fuel on board. I have 6,063 kilograms of fuel on and we are at stand 16, stand 16. I could not get stand 11, which is the one that the flight that we're following departed from. I don't know why it was not in the list of stands available with the, by the way, this is FS Dream Team here that made the Houston scenery beautifully detailed. So I've got stand 16, which was the first one I could get. So this is where we are. I'll show you the detail of the airport scenery that we have. Here you can see there's a jetway parked to the left of us. And a cloud has just come over, which is making things a little bit darker there. You can see my reflection in the glass. And going over to the right, there's the main airport as you can see out there. 
Good detail though, good detail. Right, the first thing that we need to do of course is turn on the battery. We check to make sure we have enough voltage up there in the batteries. And then we turn on the fuel pumps and then we start the APU. Yes, airports like this will have ground power available. But you always have to remember that ground power is also an additional charge to the airliner. And so Ryanair, they want to go with the most economical option. Sometimes it's better to go with ground power. But then you've got to have someone down there to unplug you when you want to push back. You lose a lot of independence when you're tied to jetways and ground power and all of the other things. You're dependent on them rather than being dependent on yourself. Just one of the things that they do. Now I'm looking for the blue light here to come on. There it is. Now we have 115 volts. Now we can do all the stuff that we want to do, such as turn on the IRS, which of course is our sat-nav system. Turn on the galley. Hopefully they're busy in the galley making us a cup of tea. What do you think? Perhaps? Oh well. Emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seatbelt. Over here we'll turn on the left and the right window heat. We want to keep them nice and warm. Yes, I am turning on the probes early. And there's the electrical hydraulic pump. The forward service hatch light is on and the equipment light is on indicating that the air stairs are down for our passengers to board the aircraft. And then over here I'm going to turn on the packs and listen. There's that rush of air that's coming out to warm up the entire cabin. And then I'll turn on the steady light so that the ground crew knows that we're here and that we are working. Right, let's go in and have a look and program the FMC. Here you can see we're checking the latest air rack. We are in date. The latest program is there and it's showing no errors. Go to the position and of course we are at KIAH, so KI. H and we are at gate C16. I'm going to put it in to see if it comes up. So C16 and it did. I'm going to accept the one that's in the database. Now I'm going to go to the root. We'll put the root in as KIAH and we are going to go to KFDW, so KFDW. We are flight number Ryanair 186, so that's RYR, and we are 186. Now I go to the next page, and we're just basically, we just have one entry to put into that, and that's Cried. So, C R I E D. That is it. Activate and execute. I'm going to go to fix now and I'm going to put the fix in for the circles around our destination airport. And the destination, of course, is K D F W. And then I'm going to put a 4-mile circle. I'm going to put a 10-mile circle. And I'm going to put a 30-mile circle. I'm going to descent. Transition level in the United States is 18,000 feet. So I'm going to change that. And then I'm going to put the values in for these three altitudes for our descent. The altimeter setting 
for our destination is 1017, 1017. And then looking at the charts, the flight plan, at flight level 200, it is 289.28. So 289 at 28. At 15,000 feet it is 308 at 27, 308 at 27, and at 10,000 feet it is 316 at 27, and 27, and we execute that. Go to departures. Now the flight plan did give us a runway but we need to check it is first to see what we have and that is on frequency one two four decimal zero five so one two four decimal zero five George Bush intercontinental H airport information Delta one eight three zero Zulu wind two three eight at three visibility greater than 20 miles Sky condition, few clouds at 1, 2,000, temperature, 1, 2, dew point, altimeter, 1, 1, 0, 1, center, landing and departing, runway, 2, 6, right, runway, 2, 6, left, and runway, 2, 7, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft read back, hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Delta. Right, we have Delta. Well, there are a number of runways in use, so what we'll do is we'll ask the ground control to give us a clearance and since we're going to depart to the north I'll ask for that Houston ground Ryanair 186 with Delta request taxi for takeoff north departure Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 26 left using taxiway 1112 November Bravo November 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 Alpha November Papa contact tower on 127.3 when ready Taxi, all short, runway 26 left via taxiway 1112 November Bravo, November, November, November Alpha, November Papa, Ryanair 186. Right, well we're departing then on runway 26 left. That's uh, so I need to change that. We'll still use the 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 Beltway 7 departure. So no change in that. Right, so we need to now put in runway 26 left so put that one in and there's the beltway 7 and we'll be using the pride transition so it's still proposed that we're coming in on 3-1 right so let's bring that one up and coming in on the Winey 4 arrival there's the Winey 4 and coming in on Tulloy and execute that right now I'm going to switch the map to plan and we will See how this looks. So there's the departure going north now. Pride coming in. There's the Howdy, and we'll join that up. And then that brings it in right onto the the runway, onto final. Right, I'm switching back to plan on here and I'm going to turn on the weather on my side and put the data on on your side Alex I'm going to put the terrain on and then the data as well I'm also going to set this the altitude to 30,000 feet I know we don't normally do that until ATC gives us permission but then again we're Ryanair and up here I'm going to put 30,000 feet into the pressurization 
Our landing altitude is 6,607 feet. So I'm going to put 600 in here for the landing altitude. Since we're departing on 26 left now, we're going to put 267 in our course heading here. And 267 here. And I'll do yours as well, Ali. Two and six, seven, there it is. Right, now that we've got that in, I'm going to perform the initialization. Our fuel is all on board and we're going to have reserves of 3,085 with the trip and taxi 2,290, that makes 5,375 or 5.4 is the closest one. Reserves are 3.1, 3.1. Cost index is six. Double click this and it will make the calculation. I'm gonna put in the cruise altitude. Our cruise wind is 286 at 32. So 286 at 32. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet. And execute that. We'll take the 12 degrees. We're not going to do any D-rates or bumps on this. Flaps of 10. Center of gravity, 24.1. The trim is 4.75. One click on each of these gives us the information that we need to put into the MCP. So up here, it is 145. And I'll turn on the yaw damper and check that the flight continuity went off. Turn on the flight director on my side and yours. And then push the LNAV and VNAV and it comes up good. And turning on those. The decision height at our destination is radio setting, so I'm going to switch to radio and then 121. So that's what our decision height will be and when we get to that then it will say minimums, minimums and then we have to make a decision at that point. I'm going to switch this to RTO. Our self-loading cargo has boarded, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the door. So when we do our pushback, we'll do a pushback and with our tail to the left and our nose to the right. Okay? Alright, so far so good. Everything is checked, so I'm a nose to the right. We'll do the checklist, make sure everything is good. Fuel is good, check, windows lock both, seat belt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP is programmed and complete, takeoff thrust bugs are all set, pre rudder air on trim is done, taxi briefing, we've done that, anti-collision light is now going on, so we're ready now to start the aircraft. Which engine would you like to start first today, Alec? Number one or number two? Number one? Okay. Then I'm going to switch to number one up here. I'm going to turn off the air packs. 
and I'm going to then ask them to cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release brake brake, please. Parking brake is off. TCAS is now on. And in a moment, Brakes released. I'm going to turn on the engine and you'll see the engine light come on there. Brakes released, here we go. Right, switching to engine number one. The start valve has opened. It's starting to spin up. Here's the N2, you can see it spinning up. When that gets to 24, then I'm going to introduce the fuel. It's coming up. There it is. Bringing in the fuel. Now I'm going to be looking for the engine gas temperature to increase and rise. There it is. We're getting an ignition. It's a good start there. Next, I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it just did. And if you listen, we should hear the engines. There, there's the engines. They've ignited. Good. Looking up here to see that we have 115 volts. We do. Switching to number two. And starting engine number two. The start valve has opened. The engines is spinning up now. The when this gets to 24, then I'll bring in the fuel. Push back complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set and fuel is now brake set. introduced. Looking now for the engine gas temperature to... Uh, there we go. We're getting a good start. Looking for Steering the low oil pressure lights. Watch for the slip release vents on your right and have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Now I'm going to go to flaps 10. Make one slight adjustment there. We have 115 volts. Things are looking good. And now I'm going to switch to the generators in the main engines. Going to turn on the heat again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Turn on the three taxi lights that we have, and we are set now for generators are on. Check pro heat is on. Anti ice not required. Isolation valve check. Engine start levers, idle D10, flight deck door is closed and locked, recall is check, flight controls check, flaps green lights, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down and D10, ground equipment is clear. So we are now ready to Taxi to the active runway we've been assigned. Right, I've managed to get the Navigraph charts now working and you'll be able to follow the route by looking just down here on the bottom right. Okay, get myself organized and final quick check. Good. Now we need to go out out here and then take the taxiway down and then go to the end of the runway so brake is off everything's looking good crew we're moving ah. all right now we're on our way Request taxi to parking. Orbit 1831, taxi.
six left. Ryanair one eight six cleared for takeoff. Runway two six left. Cleared for takeoff. Runway two six left. Ryanair one eight six. All right, final check before uh, departure. Takeoff briefing. Engine bleeds are on. Engine start switch is continuous, and we are cleared for takeoff. So, advanced power to N1, we have good power, and toggle button push, and we're rolling.
now coming up on the Cowboy Kiowa.
you get enough caviar? And good, good, I'm glad to hear that. We only have the best, you know, here. Only the best. We take good care of our guests on this flight.
runway is in sight, the airport is in sight. Okay, engine start switches continuous. Altimeters set. Clean up. 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 Clean up.
straight in runway 17 left, altimeter 1017, orbit 471, clear to land runway 17 left. Clear to land runway 17 left, orbit 471. Make straight in runway 17 left, orbit 5861. Alright, stopping the clock. 56 minutes is what it took for the flight. right here you can see on the chart to my right here we are at the very bottom of uh, 17 left we need to turn around here to go up get to the Echo Romeo and then go all the way across we need to go all the way to the the Juliet Sierra and then make our way north so Everything is okay. All right. Crew is released to work. And we'll swing around here. Oh, look at that. Got activated radars over there. Hope you can see it. detail. Now this is the Echo Romeo coming up. So we will need to take this one.
sitting over there, are they? to cross over and bypass a couple of runways here so I'm going to have to keep my eyes open for any traffic coming in we should be clear of anything though in this airport. This is also by FS Dream Team, you know. Both of these airport sceneries that we've used today are FS Dream Team. My goodness, look at the detail of that.
until I get to Kilo 6. in the background there. We should stay there. Have a party. Now we're passing in front of the the Charlie terminal building. terminal which is where the originating flight went into well we certainly have a journey didn't we from the landing Ooh. A lot of taxiing. Right, we should be. This is the Alpha terminal coming up now. And we'll turn off at the 15. Is they're all out in force. Ah. Well, don't get in our way. Now, this one should be it, I think. And yes, this is 15. So I'm going to turn on to this one. And then we're going to pull in to 
to that one over there, which is Alpha 21. everything is cleaned up and they're all off okay so fuel pumps are off APU off battery is off and shutdown is complete well let me show you what the terminal looks like from where we are look at the detail incredible detail oh there's monorail of some sort just directly above wonderful detail well this is fs dream team that made this one and made the other one too well we had a bit of excitement there coming in when they switched the runways and of course that uh, that sometimes happened and then you've got to really huff and puff to get yourself lined up again but fortunately we managed to do it and we made a good landing i hope that you liked the trip and that um, we did everything right, I hope. That's some really incredible detail. I mean, the way they do this, the way that they have the paint r edges are all rubbed off and bare. It's very realistic, very realistic. Right, Alec. Alec Berry, it was a pleasure having you on board and I hope that you enjoyed it. Everyone else, I will see you all again next week in another flight of Ryanair 186. Bye everybody.